Trust is a fragile thing, especially if you've been hurt in the past or are struggling with a difficult situation. Maybe you've been betrayed in the past or keep attracting unavailable or emotionally detached men. Maybe you're in a relationship with someone who struggles with substance use or compulsive behavior. So how do you start trusting again? If you've been struggling with trust issues in the love department or just finding it hard to trust yourself after past betrayals of any sort, you're in the right place. Hi beautiful souls, Mireille Nicole here, relationship coach for high achieving, high value women who want to live their best life. I'm all about guiding you towards your happily ever after and helping you tackle the tough stuff in love. I record these videos because I want to help you realize that you have so much more power in your marriage, relationship, or dating life than you currently think. In today's video, we're talking about how to rebuild self-trust and learn to trust others again, specifically your partner or men in general. I'm breaking down five actionable steps to rebuild your self-trust and start trusting through a fresh lens. Let's get into it. First things first, let's talk about what trust really means. And I read something profound recently in a book. A respected therapist was asked, how do you know if you can trust someone? And the therapist responded, the real question isn't whether or not you can trust the other person, it's whether you can trust yourself to take care of yourself with this person. Wow, that just like blew my mind. And this insight is crucial because it shifts the focus focus from the external to the internal. Trust is not just about relying on others to be truthful or to stick to their word or follow through on what they say. It's also about trusting yourself to handle whatever happens. So let's dive into five effective ways to rebuild that self-trust and start trusting others again. First up is mindset. It's essential to remind yourself that no matter what has happened, you have the strength to handle it. I love the perspective that everything is happening for you, that whatever challenging love situation comes my way, I was made for this. It comes to me because I can actually handle it and I will grow from the experience, even if it doesn't feel that way in the moment. It's also about detaching from the outcome. So instead of obsessing over what could go wrong, focus on what you can control, your own actions and your own responses. I know this is easier said than done, but tell yourself, you know, it's gonna be okay. And allow yourself to approach each situation with an open heart and a resilient mindset. This approach can help you stay grounded and reduce anxiety. Next, let's talk about coping skills. Despite having a positive mindset, you'll want to determine coping skills ahead of time. Having strategies in place for handling disappointments or difficult emotions can make a big difference. And these skills are like your emotional toolkit. For instance, journaling can help you process your feelings. I love, I'm obsessed with journaling when I feel sad or discouraged. Or maybe it's going for a long walk to clear your mind. That's something I also do all the time. But find whatever works for you, whether it's listening to music, practicing mindfulness, or talking things out with a trusted friend. These coping mechanisms are not just for when things go wrong, they're actually daily practices that help you stay balanced and resist resilient. So don't necessarily wait for things to go wrong, start doing these things now. Number three is having a support system. So this can also be considered a coping skill, but I think it deserves its own spotlight. Having a support system is just crucial. So reestablish those connections with friends, family, or colleagues who uplift and support you. I know in the moment when things are, aren't going so well or you've lost trust in someone, it can be hard to do these things, but you must prioritize your well-being and the community around you, the community that you have access to. And it's not all about unloading your problems on them, but rather having a network that keeps you engaged and focused on positive experience. I always say be very mindful in terms of who you share things with and how much you share in your relationship because it's not just important to just spill you know, your heart out to everyone. It's really about just removing yourself and putting yourself in a positive environment with other people who are there to really shift the focus, even if it's just for a temporary measure, until you can get back on track into rebuilding that trust in yourself and that trust in others. Another key aspect is practice 
practicing trust building with yourself. So start small, set achievable goals that you can follow through on. And this can be something as simple as setting a consistent bedtime and sticking to it. I was working with a client recently and one of the things we were working on was her self-trust and her self-confidence. And so she decided she would go to bed at 9 p.m. every single night and work on doing that despite all the external circumstances that came her way. And you know what? It sounds super simple, but it was actually very difficult for her to do this. And I'm sure you can think of things that you want to start doing to rebuild that trust in yourself and rebuilding that trust in others. But there's always something that comes your way. And for some reason, it's just hard to stick to it. So in terms of building that trust, I really encourage you to set those goals and follow through with them and work towards that. These small successes can really boost your confidence and reinforce your belief in your reliability. And you will start seeing that in other people also. As you build confidence in keeping your own commitments, you'll find it easier to trust yourself in other areas of your life too, right? Like including relationships. So it might not seem like there's a link between having an early bedtime and your relationship with your partner, but it's completely interrelated. They always say how you do one thing is how you do most things. Finally, pay attention to whether people's actions align with their words. So this isn't about being suspicious, but about being realistic and listening to your intuition if someone says they're committed to something but their actions don't reflect that, it's going to be a red flag. Now, in the case of addiction, which I used as an example in the beginning, this is trickier and you'll need to readjust your approach. That's a whole other video. But generally speaking, trust yourself to make decisions based on consistent behaviors rather than empty promises. And remember, rebuilding trust takes time, but with these strategies, you can start to regain trust in yourself and your relationships sooner rather than later. And trusting yourself is the first step towards trusting others. So start within. For guidance on how to get more honesty from your partner, watch this video next.